Hey guys, and welcome back to another PyQt tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is covering buttons, button presses, and modifying elements that we've already put onto the window. Now, we're going to actually be changing this code up quite a bit, and you guys will see why as we progress through this tutorial, but let's get started with buttons. Now, if we want to add a button to our window, all we have to do is very similar to what we did with the label. And that is simply say, let maybe B1 is our variable name will be equal to QT widgets dot in this case, push button, I believe, uh, Q push button, how could I forget? And then same thing here, what we're going to do is put that that's going to be on win. And now we're going to set the text of our button by just doing button dot set text. So we go here and we set this to maybe click me or something like that. Then that's all we need to do to display a button. So if I run the program, you can see that now we get this button up in the top hand corner. But obviously, when we click it, nothing is happening. So what we need to do next is kind of map this button click to an event. So something that happens when we click this button. Now, what we need to do to do that is first of all, create a function that we will trigger when that button is clicked. So in this case, I'm going to create a function, I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, let's say, clicked like that. And in here, all we're going to do is simply print to the screen clicked, just to make sure that everything is actually working. Now, if we want to map the button press to this clicked function, what we do is very simple, we say button dot clicked dot connect. And in here, we just type the name of the function without the brackets. So this is simply connecting that button click event, which is this here to um, this clicked function. Now there's some other events that we can look for as well. There are actually called signals in um, PyQt, but right now we're just going to deal with click. So now if I run the program and I do click me, you can see that clicked shows up in the console down there in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. Now that's great and all, but that's really not that useful to us uh, just to print something out to the screen. In fact, something that we might want to do is maybe change the contents of this label. But how do we actually go about doing that in the current way that we've written this code? Well, we don't actually know how. And the reason I say that is because this needs to be mapped to a function. And this function has no access to this label uh, that we've created here. So there actually there is a way to do this the way you've written it, but it's kind of complicated. So I'm going to show you a way to rewrite the code that we have right now into a class, which will mean that uh, all of these kind of clicked methods and all that will have access to everything. So to do this, we're going to start and we'll just leave this code down below and we'll kind of delete it as we go through. And we're going to create a class and we can call it whatever we want. But in this case, I'm going to call it my window. Now we are going to actually inherit from Q main window. Now, what this means is we're going to take all of the properties that Q main window has, and we're going to use them in my window, and we're going to change them slightly and modify some things and add some things uh, to that window. So the first method we need to write for this is actually the init method. So we're going to do underscore underscore init underscore underscore, we're going to put self as an attribute. And then inside of here, we're going to call super my window self dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And then in here, we won't pass anything. Now, let me quickly talk about what we actually just did. So any of you that are familiar with object oriented pro um, programming probably know what this is. Um, if you're not, I have a tutorial series on my channel, I'll leave a link to that or a card if you want to get more familiar with Python object oriented programming. But essentially, what we've done is we've done a little bit of inheritance here, we've created an init method, which will run whenever we create an instance of my window. And then we need to make sure that we're calling what's known as the parent constructor. Um, of this, you know, my window thing here. So Q main window so that everything gets set up properly. So that's what this line is doing here. Now the next method we're going to call or create is actually going to be a knit UI. Now this, um, some people will choose to omit, but I like to do it this way. It's going to take an argument of self and inside of here is going to be where we put all of the stuff that we want in our window. So also inside of a knit, I'm going to call a knit UI by doing self dot init UI like that. And this way, we're just kind of cleaning up our code a little bit so that all the stuff that we're going to be putting onto our window will go inside of this method here. So what goes in our window? Well, that's going to be all the stuff um, like the label and the button that we've created here. So I'm just going to copy that and put it inside of a knit UI like that. 
Now we are going to have to change a few things. However, the first thing that we're going to need to change is win here. Now, this is actually Q, win Q main window. And we, when we create an instance of my window, what we're really doing is creating an instance of Q main window. So just like here, when I said win equals Q main window, well, what is actually happening in here when we have these widgets is we're going to be adding them to the object itself. So what we need to do in here is actually write self. Now, if that's confusing, uh, I don't really know what to say, but essentially we're going to be creating an instance of my window and that's going to be holding um, like this my window thing. So we can't just add it to like win or we can't create a new window inside of here. We need to add the widget to ourself because we this object is the actual window. All right, so now we're going to change those to be self. And what we're going to do is actually add self before all of these. So in for self dot label, we're going to add self and same thing for B1. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to access um, label and B1 anywhere throughout my object or throughout my class so that when we you know, click a button, I can actually change this label text from inside of that function or that method because it's a part of the class. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually create a method called clicked. So I'm going to say define clicked. It's going to take self and inside of here this time, what we're going to do is actually change the text that the label shows. So I'm going to say self dot label. We're able to do that again because we're inside this object dot set text. And we're going to say you pressed the button like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just change this here, this connect to be self dot clicked because we need to reference this clicked, not this clicked down here. And we're going to remove a few things from our window here. And I'm going to show you how this works. So we're going to get rid of this label and this button because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to take this win dot set geometry and win dot set window title. And we're going to bring that up here into our init method. So now, since what we were doing before is setting the window geometry and setting the window title, um, and that was again an instance of Q main window, all we need to do actually is just put self here instead of win. And this will do the exact same thing. Because again, this is our window. So if we want to change properties of the window, we don't reference win, we're going to reference self, because you know, that is the window. Awesome. So now that we have that, what we need to do actually here is just change win, which is down here to be an instance of my window rather than Q main window. So to do that, we're just going to change this to be my window. And now we can actually go ahead and run the application uh, and we'll see our window. So let's test this out quickly and we get the exact same window kind of as before, except now if we click the button, you can actually see that it changes our label to say you pressed the butt. Now notice I didn't add that O N there and that's because it's actually being cut off. And this is where we come to our next issue. When we modify some of the attributes that are inside of our window, we need to change the size of them as well. So right now what was happening is when we initially create a label, which we do here, uh, all it says is my first label and it has a set width. So as soon as you know, when I click this button and this width is greater than the width that it has, it, it cuts off. It doesn't show the rest of the text. So what we need to add is a way to update the width of this text. And it's pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is create a method called update in here. And this will automatically be called anytime there is a change to the window, which is really nice. So inside of here, what I'm going to do is just do self dot. In this case, we're going to say label dot just size like that. Now, what this is going to do is just automatically adjust the size of the label to hold whatever text it is that we've given it. And this update method will be called again anytime anything changed. All right, so small apologies on my part there, guys. Um, this update method is not actually automatically called. I'm thinking of another one. Um, what we need to do is every time we click the button, what we're going to do is just call this update method, which means that um, since we know something's changing, well, we'll update that property accordingly. So in here, we're going to say self dot update like that. And now when I run the program uh, and we do click me, it says you press the button and adjust that size accordingly. So that has kind of been it for this tutorial. We've talked about buttons, uh, triggering events with those buttons, and also how to set up our code in a nice clean class that's gonna be a lot easier to work with in the future. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or join my Discord server. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another video.